Hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, I'm going to talk about cost curves and then firm supply, which are chapter titles from a couple chapters in Varian. And so the basic idea here is we are going to think, kind of remind ourselves about costs, how we've defined them from the principles of economics course, and then give rise to our sort of intermediate microanalysis. So the first thing we want to think about how or provide a way to think about cost graphically and break down total costs into constituent parts of fixed and variable costs and then think about the graphs and the characteristics of these cost curves. You should be able to draw generic cost curved graphs and then you should be able to actually back out. Ultimately, I'll show with a sort of another lecture how we can go from the firm's production technology to the cost curves. It's actually cost curves come from the production technology. And so that'll that'll be the very next video. All right, so both for the standpoint of like making sure everybody's got the same starting point and for the standpoint of kind of introducing the terminology once again, I'll just go back over the definitions and talk about kind of basic costs. So average costs, well, our average variable cost function is just the variable cost per unit of output. And so this is like Varian notation. So Varian likes using Y for output. So this would be like my cost function. This V means this is the variable portion of my cost function. Divide costs, total cost by output, gives us average variable cost. Average fixed cost measures fixed cost per unit of output. So F divided by Y, my fixed cost divided by the amount of output gives me my average fixed cost. So something just to pay attention to is we're just looking at the functional form. There's an output in the numerator here. There's an output in the denominator here, right? Here, there's no output in the numerator. There's only an output in the denominator. So when output rises, variable costs could rise or could fall, typically rises. When output rises, average fixed cost is gonna fall because fixed cost doesn't rise with output. Anyway, so, so jointly, average variable cost and average fixed cost, I'll come back to that idea with the graph, Jointly, these give us the average cost function, right? So average variable cost plus average fixed cost gives us average cost. And remember, average cost, the difference between average cost and average variable cost, just average fixed cost. And average fixed cost tends towards zero. Once again, I just kind of, before I show the graph or talk about this, think about like, think about the fixed cost associated with producing some level of output. Suppose you produce one unit. Suppose your fixed cost is $1,000. You produce one unit. Your average fixed cost is $1,000. Now suppose you produce 1,000 units. Your average fixed cost is $1. Suppose you produce much more. It's going to keep tending towards zero. And so average fixed cost as output gets large, gets really small, which means the difference between average cost and average variable cost becomes really small as well as output rises. All right, so average cost, well, average costs tend to look like a U. The total, average total cost curve looks like a U. And the reason why is because there's a left half, the left half portion of the U that's dominated by these decreasing average fixed costs for the story I just told. The right half of the U is coming from the increasing average variable costs as output is increased. So as output's increasing, you've got this sort of race between declining average fixed cost and rising average variable cost. And at first, the falling average fixed cost is the stronger effect. It pulls down average cost. But then as output starts getting larger and larger and then towards infinity, it's the average variable cost rising that swamps out the average fixed cost falling, which hits a lower bound at zero, right? All right, so the average total cost curve is going to be this U-shaped curve. Whoops, 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 whoops. I'm trying to find myself now. All right, so then marginal cost. Well, marginal cost is just the derivative of the total cost function. First derivative of the total cost function with respect to output, right? Measures the change in cost for a given change in output. And so suppose this is our total cost function. Well, that's the variable cost portion, the fixed cost portion. The derivative is just going to be, well, actually just the derivative of the variable cost portion, right? Because the fixed cost is going to go to zero when we take that derivative with respect to output. Again, this dy, we're using y for output, consistent with variant. All right, so this is just my comment saying, well, the, var the marginal cost is driven by the variable cost portion because the fixed cost portion goes to zero. Why? Because fixed cost doesn't change when you, use, uh, when you produce more output. 
Uh, it, well, at a certain point, then you you know so other th other things equal. Now, of course, yeah, so if you if you if you're scaling up in the very long run and you need to produce more and more output, maybe you need bigger fat. We don't think about those sorts of things. So we're thinking about like if I'm producing incrementally one more unit of output, did my fixed cost change? No. All right. So average variable cost may initially slope downward, but it doesn't have to. It'll eventually rise as long as there's fixed costs that are constraining production, right? It'll eventually rise. So what's happening? Well, uh, not fixed 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 cost fixed factor. So suppose we have a, some type of bottleneck. We have some maybe we need workers and we need machines to make our product, and we're running out of machines. So this is going to give us a sort of diminishing marginal uh, productivity, and then all of a sudden our costs are going to start rising. Uh, average cost initially falls down due to declining fixed cost. Ultimately rises due to this increasing average variable cost. And then we're expecting marginal cost and average variable cost are the same for the first unit of output. However, the key, and this is actually the key to solving a lot of our sort of intermediate micro type questions as pertains to cost curves. Marginal cost crosses through the minimum of both average cost and average variable, average variable cost. It crosses, at, it crosses the, the bottom of average variable cost and average, uh, average cost crosses them at the minimum from below. That's this picture. So we here we have average cost, here we have average variable cost, and then we have marginal cost crossing average variable cost and average cost from below at their minimum. The other thing is remember, everywhere that marginal cost is higher than average cost, average cost is rising. And everywhere that marginal cost is below, like graphic, like the height, everywhere the height of marginal cost is below the height of the average cost, average cost is coming down. So I'll talk about that in a second. The other thing, here we see average variable cost and average cost tending together, right? As output's getting larger, they're getting smaller, they're getting closer and closer. Why? The only thing that average cost has that average fixed or average variable cost doesn't have is average fixed cost, but that's tending to zero. All right, so then we're expecting average cost is gonna be pulled down by a lower um, by a lower marginal cost, and average cost is going to be pulled up by a higher marginal cost. You could think of like a batting average for like a softball team or a baseball team. If a player has a game where their batting average is higher than their season long average, it's going to raise their average, right? That's like marginal relative to average. If they have a game where their marginal, where their where their batting average is lower than their season average, it brings down the average. So the reason why marginal cost is higher than average cost when mar average cost is rising, and the reason why marginal cost is vertically lower than average cost when average cost is falling, it has to do with the relationship between marginal and average. So here's an example of our cost curves. So again, y is our output, so c of y is our total cost function. This is y squared plus one. So our variable cost is y squared, our fixed cost is one. right? So variable cost, y squared, fixed cost is one. Average variable cost, that's just the variable portion divided by output, that's just y. Average fixed cost, that's the fixed cost portion divided by output. Average cost is just gonna be the sum of our average variable cost and average fixed cost, whoops. And then my marginal cost is my first derivative of the total cost function. Of course, that's just the first derivative of my variable cost function. The other thing is without even looking at the graph, just kind of looking at these functions, sure enough, marginal cost and average variable cost are going to be the same at the very beginning. And marginal cost is going to cross average variable cost from below at its minimum, actually at zero. That's this picture right here. Marginal cost and average variable cost is going to emanate from the same place. Average cost and average variable cost are going to tend towards each other as output gets really large. Marginal cost is also going to cross average cost from below at its minimum. Uh, the last thing you might say is like, wait a second, this is different. Here we have average variable cost is just a line. Back here we had average variable cost and it was curved. What gives? Well, for this to happen, you have to think about we need average variable cost to be like a quadratic. So we would need average, we'd need total cost to be at least a cubic function, right? So if total cost has like output raised to the third, then the first derivative or 
for like for marginal cost or the average variable cost is going to be raised to the second power so you get in this nice quadratic however if total cost is a quadratic like this then average variable cost has to be linear and so will be marginal cost so that's why this picture looks like this because the total cost function was was uh, quadratic all right so say a little bit about perfect competition this will bring us to the doorstep of being able to talk about the firm's supply decision so the market's perfectly competitive if every firm is a price taker typically we assume we've got many buyers many sellers they're selling identical products there's no barriers to entry there's perfect information but the big thing that tells us we've got a competitive market is that the firms are price takers. They're going to take the prices given. They're basically going to stare at whatever is the market price. They're going to bring their marginal cost equal to the marginal to the market price, and then that's going to be the amount of output. So in perfect competition, price is going to be equal to marginal cost in the equilibrium. Why? Because any firm selling below marginal cost, though they'd capture the market, would earn losses, and any firm pricing above marginal cost is going to make no sales. We're assuming demand is perfectly elastic for an individual competitive firm. So what's going to happen? Well, firms only need to focus on their quantity decision if the market's perfectly competitive. So what does that look like? Well, the firm's profit maximization problem looks like this. They're, cho they're choosing output to maximize profit. This is revenue, price times output. This is cost. For the competitive firm, well, marginal revenue is just the price. Each additional unit is sold for exactly the market price. So how much extra revenue does the firm get when it produces, when it increases its output by some amount? Well, the change in revenue is going to be the market price times the change in the output. And then rearranging, sure enough, this is like DRDQ or DRDY is going to be a market price, right? Marginal revenue, this is, uh, this is literally marginal revenue is equal to the market price, right? Change in revenue divided by change in output, that's marginal revenue. It's equal to the market price. So the competitive firms, what they're going to do is they're going to choose the output where the marginal cost it's facing is just equal to the mark to the market price. It's choosing its marginal cost to equal the, choosing its output to bring its marginal cost equal to the market price. Last thing you got to do is then check to make sure that it's higher, it's exceeding average variable cost there. But anyway, so we'll talk about that in a second. For a given market price, we want to find the point where profits are maximized. Well. If price is greater than marginal cost for some level of output, the firm can increase its profits by producing a little bit more. So price greater than marginal cost would look like this. So price minus, this is like DCDQ or DCD output. Marginal, this is, this is just marginal cost. How is total cost changing with the amount of output? That's marginal cost. So if price minus marginal cost is positive, then if, if they increase a little bit of uh, increase a little bit of output uh, we end up well if price greater than marginal cost you should do a little bit more and in doing so this is going to increase the production cost this is going to raise costs and then bring us to equality so increasing output by some small amount is going to end up giving us a situation where well the increase in revenue from increasing output will ultimately uh, initially exceeds the increase in cost, so profits are increasing. At the optimal, well, the firm's going to produce where price is equal to marginal cost. All right, so this, the firm's supply curve, because it wants to produce where it, want, it wants to produce such that its marginal cost is equal to the market price, and it needs for that the corresponding market price to be higher than its average variable cost of producing that output. So that's why we say the supply curve is going to be the marginal cost above average variable cost. So marginal cost above average variable cost. That's why I've drawn this here, or Varian has drawn. I, Varian has drawn this here. Output is going to be zero for all prices lower than the minimum of average variable cost. That's telling us the firm's not going to supply anything until the market price is high enough to cross its shutdown point. Then it's going to produce here, be making losses. This is a short run. These are short run losses firm would produce between average variable cost and average total cost because it's losing less by producing than it would by shutting down. If it shuts down, it's going to lose its fixed cost. If it produces, it's going to make back, it's covering at least its variable cost. It's going to eat into its fixed cost a little bit. So we don't want to, so you can think of like the cookie factory example. If the price is down here, you're taking your inputs and you're making them into cookies that taste terrible. 
so they're worth less than you bought the inputs for. In this situation, you're making good cookies. Consumers like good cookies. However, the price, even though you're transforming your ingredients, your inputs into something where the output is worth more than it than the ingredient costs were, here you're failing to cover your fixed costs. So maybe your uh, retail space, your storefront is the rent is too high or something like that. That's like this situation. And then you'd have positive economic profits if you're above your average cost. All right, so this is just my comments here. The supply curve is the portion of the marginal cost that lies above the average variable cost. Firm will not operate if marginal cost is lower than average variable cost. It can have greater profits, smaller losses by shutting down because then it's not transforming its ingredients into cookies that nobody wants. When the firm produces zero outputs, well, its profits or its or its losses, it's still paying its fixed costs. So it's going to be minus F if it produces zero. So the firm is better off going out of business if it's the case that it loses less, right? That's a greater than, better, better to lose this amount than to lose price times output minus cost. This is just profits, right? So price times output is revenue minus the cost of that output. So if the, if the, if the revenue, if the, if the revenue of producing is not exceeding the cost of producing, and then, then, uh, then you're better off just shutting down. So this gives rise to our shut off or shutdown condition. So this is when price is below average variable cost. If price is lower than average variable cost, yeah, the firm's better off producing a quantity of zero. All right, so then I'll just conclude with an exercise here. The firm has a long run cost function, three Y squared plus 192. In the long run, it'll supply a positive amount of output so long as price is greater than. So we're just asking, when is this firm gonna produce in the long run? Well, that's if price is, greater or equal to its minimum average total cost. All right, so average cost, if this is total cost, average cost is gonna be, so if this is total cost, average cost is gonna be three Y, right? Divide this by output, three Y plus 192 divided by Y, or it's the same as 192 times Y to the minus one. So we take this derivative, this just goes to three, right? DATC DY, take this derivative, that's just this coefficient. And then the derivative here, this minus one times 192, reduce the power by one, brings us to minus uh, two. And then moving, this is like equal to zero. And then solving, we have three y squared is equal to 192, or y squared is equal to 64, or output is eight. That's not the answer. That's how much output minimizes average cost. We need the price. So obviously this is a quantity, we need to find the price. So we'll evaluate my cost, C of eight is equal to 24 plus 24 or 48. So, um, so this is the price corresponding to the minimum of average costs, price of 48. And then the last thing, oh, we discussed to uh, cost curves. We introduced our terminology and how to think about these important elements of our cost curves. Then we saw some graphs. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and conclude here.